In this video, we are going to show how to use the Spectrum Analyzer built into Trimble GNSS receivers and how this tool can be used to troubleshoot problems due to interference. The topics covered will include explaining what a Spectrum Analyzer is, what equipment is needed, basic ways of using the Spectrum Analyzer, and then we'll finish off by looking at some examples of how the tool can be used to troubleshoot problems caused by interference. A spectrum analyzer is a device that measures and displays electronic signals by plotting signal power over a particular frequency range. It is very useful in identifying known and unknown signals and sources of GNSS interference. The spectrum analyzer is built into modern receivers that are built on the Maxwell 7 technology. These include the SPS 986, R750, R780 and MS 9X6 receivers. This is a very common process, so will only be briefly described here. Connect the computer to the receiver by using the Wi-Fi on your computer to find the receiver access point SSID, which will be called something like Trimble GNSS 1234 and connect. Enter the Wi-Fi encryption key, which by default is ABCDE ABCDE. Open the web browser on your computer and browse to 192.168.142.1 to access the web interface. The default login is admin and password. The web UI will now be displayed. We will now show the fundamentals of using the receiver spectrum analyzer. There are two types of graph and each one has different options. So we will focus on the spectrum analyzer graph first and then cover the spectrum history graph. From the web UI, select receiver status, spectrum analyzer. We are in the spectrum analyzer graph view and this is the closest view to a traditional spectrum analyzer and displays the amplitude of the signal on the y-axis and the frequency on the x-axis. As you move the mouse left and right across the graph, the frequency and signal level is dynamically displayed as can be seen in the gray box above the graph. You can magnify whatever is on the y-axis by placing the mouse on the desired area of the graph, then press and hold the left mouse button while dragging it vertically up and down. The shadow shows which area will be magnified. Release the left mouse button and the area is now magnified. To return to the original display, place the mouse anywhere on the graph and double click the left mouse button. The same can be done for the X axis. Click and drag to magnify, double click to return to default. The select band option allows the user to select which frequency to display. The x-axis frequency range is generally 50 MHz, with the exception of the MSS band, which is 50 kHz wide. This is the maximum frequency range that can be viewed at any one time. For example, L1 displays from 1565 to 1615 MHz. The Show Center Frequencies option toggles on and off superimposed lines representing the associated GNSS signals and GLONASS minimum and maximum range. This gives an easy way to identify where you might expect to see signals from the GNSS satellites and how close any interference might be. There are three selections available for the filtering mode. When set to no filtering, the spectrum analyzer passes the raw data sample directly to the display. This is useful for attempting to catch transient type signals such as radars. For the next option, max hold, the spectrum analyzer also uses the unfiltered data set but displays a maximum value for each frequency. This is again useful to catch transient type signals, but can't measure the duration or repetition rate of the transient signals. Filtered spectrum is the default mode and uses low pass data filtering to filter the data displayed. The data filters can be cleared by clicking reset filter. The second type of graph is spectrum history. And this displays time versus frequency in a waterfall format which allows for viewing results over a period of time, generally 24 hours. The waterfall format also contains amplitude information presented as colours. As you move the mouse around the graph, the frequency, signal level and time is dynamically displayed and the X and Y axis can be expanded as shown previously. The current receiver file allows the user to look at each frequency band for the last 24 hours. The log receiver file allows the user to view historical data the files are organised by day and frequency band. The amount of history held in the receiver depends on the amount of available memory in the receiver. Typically the receiver can store about three months of files. There are several options for viewing the information including time history which is the default waterfall view. Show center frequencies toggles on or off superimposed lines representing the associated GNSS signals. 
Flip axis changes the view so that age of data is on the x-axis and frequency is on the y-axis. Average spectrum looks similar to the spectrum analyzer filtered spectrum mode. 3D time history provides a 3D view of frequency, signal level and time. Interference is when other signal sources disrupt the GNSS signals and result in poor positioning accuracy or worst case, no position at all. GNSS satellite signals are very weak and are vulnerable to interference. The GNSS signals have their own unique frequencies, but other signals can sit right next to the GNSS frequency, and if they have a much larger signal to noise ratio, then this can swamp the GNSS signals partially or completely. Sources of interference can range from everyday items in the home, office, or construction site. Other sources can be from airports, military, communication towers, high voltage power lines, etc. We will now look at several examples of how the spectrum analyzer can be used to troubleshoot interference problems. This example is a simple illustration of how the spectrum analyzer can be used to identify known and unknown frequencies. The frequency band has been set to L5 and the location is Westminster, Colorado. The table shows the transmit frequencies from airports in the local vicinity and by comparing the transmit channel list with the spike shown on the spectrum analyzer, all of the frequencies are clearly visible except for Gill at 1176 MHz. We can identify that there is one unknown signal at approximately 1195 MHz with a signal level of 25 dB. There are no obvious frequencies that might be affecting L5, but there is a triangle shape centered on the L5 center frequency that might be worth investigating. In this example, there are reported cycle slips for the GPS L2 signal. Viewing the spectrum analyzer, there are several unknown signals, including narrowband signals at 1250 and 1232.5 MHz, as well as wideband signals at 1217, 1227.6 and 1230 MHz. The 1227.6 MHz signal, while in band for GPS L2, does not seem large enough to cause a problem. Changing the spectrum analyzer mode to max hold shows a large wideband signal from 1217 to 1227 MHz. This sits very close to the GPS L2 band and could be causing the cycle slips. Changing to the spectrum history view shows only the signals at 1230 MHz and the smaller one at 1228 MHz. The wideband interference at 1217 to 1227 MHz does not show up which indicates that it's some sort of transient signal that gets averaged out of the previous views. The most likely type of signal that would behave this way is radar. The spectrum analyzer was then placed in no filtering mode and a screen recording application was used to record video of the spectrum analyzer display for approximately three minutes. These three figures were taken from this recording, which shows the radar pulse from approximately 1215 to 1250 megahertz. In this example, there is a machine that has a problem of poor positioning. Machine applications have many devices including displays, sensors, radios, Wi-Fi and a significant amount of cabling. Interference problems due to a fault with one of these devices can occur on the machine and these can be complex and time consuming to solve. Viewing the receiver spectrum history graph for L1 signals, you can see that there are no GPS L1 signals at the expected frequency of 1575.42 MHz. Looking at the other unknown signals, there is a significant signal present at around 1587 MHz and what was found was that the RF being emitted at that frequency was so strong that it was swamping the GPS L1 frequency. By disconnecting some of the other devices on the machine, the signal at 1587 MHz disappears and the GPS L1 signal then appears at the expected 1575.42 MHz. This process can be repeated for each device on the machine to narrow it down to the one causing the interference. It can then be investigated whether the device is faulty, wiring is faulty, installed too close to something else, etc.